G'day guys, in today's video I'm having a bit of a work on an iPhone XS Max and the customer has brought in their own version of the display to install to save their money and I've agreed to do it even though it's something I don't want to do especially looking at the quality of the screen that they purchase so I typically either get hard OLEDs or soft OLED displays which they're the same kind of screen technology as the XS Max already is this particular customer's brought in an in-cell display. So by that, they've brought in an LCD display to go into an OLED display model. So first of all, let's have a look at the differences here. So granted, on this side of things, on this side of the phone, we've not seen too much out of the ordinary. I'm looking down here at this connection down here, which is completely different to over here. I'm not sure what that's actually there for. Speculation maybe, but for the backlight or the backlight driver. But look at the here and here, all fairly similar. The amount of wires that are here compared to here is considerably less. Hold it up and hopefully you can see the pair of them together on the right angle. So this bottom one down here or here, you can see a lot more traces on this side. But the biggest thing that most customers will notice is going to be the thickness of their phone after they've replaced it to it and I'm going to assume an overall degrading quality of the image itself being it's going from an OLED to an LCD. Let's say let's have a look at the thickness of let's have a look at the thickness of the OLED. So we're coming in at a very rough 2.3 mil or 0 0.9 inches. And let's now reset. Let's have a look at the incel. I would say those specs are completely out. Reset. 2.2, certainly not right, zero, let's move from a similar location, clear, 1.8 mil, so over 1.8 versus 2.2, so the physical thickness of it is fatter on the in-cell LCD version as opposed to the OLED even looking at pretty much the size of the frame. This one here is sticking out considerably more. So the screen itself is going to protrude further out than the OLED version because there's now multiple layers. There has to be a backlight, there has to be the touch panel, so considerably more dense. So I'll put this one away. And let's get into it. I am curious to see if there's an overall noticeable image quality. So I'm not going to bother showing the teardown to get to the installation. So let's teleport to that now. Another thing to point out while I was opening this up, I was suspicious that this one had been actually replaced before. The biggest giveaway was the actual frame coming away from the glass. And once I got in there, it did almost, or almost look like it had signs of water damage around the bottom here. So as we can see, I believe that this one has already had a, or nearly the exact same or LCD display put on there, especially going by here. As we can see, we have the exact same module down the bottom. So, and another thing that I've found is once I've connected it up to my reader, this device, all the various stats and serial numbers that you transfer from the old phone to the new phone, this one came out completely blank. The other giveaway that I had that this had been replaced before was the ribbon cable here was running straight across. So if I zoom you guys in, this is useful to know if, if you want to find out if a screen's been replaced before, is this particular cable. Here, if I can stop it from wobbling erratically, there we go, it was straight across like that. Typically it folds down and runs up here. So looking at the cable itself, they've also damaged it in the past with their installation. 
I can see a fold right near those numbers. So right a bit above my tweezers. So it has been actually severed. This is one reason why I don't like accepting jobs. So see, it's already been severed once before. So if it's been severed, they're gonna blame that on me, highly likely. So yeah, shame on me. Anyway, they mightn't care about that. They just may want their device to go again. But now let's teleport to the new screen. And we'll do a bit of a comparison. So looking at it, the quality of it isn't as bad as I thought. But the biggest thing is going that most people will acknowledge or notice is the screen lighting up fully rather than partially. But my biggest concern with this is the differences in voltage that's required or the power supply that's required. Granted, it's, it shouldn't be too bad. It should be made with intolerance, but there is definitely potential for board issues, especially when it's trying to drive an OLED display as opposed to an LCD display. Also, granted, I don't know the technical differences between it, but I would assume there would be some difference considering it doesn't need to run, constantly run the backlight, being it's non-existent. So, it does have me a bit curious. So I'm gonna proceed and just swap this over. I was actually expecting to see the resolution to be a lot lower than it is, where the resolution of it wasn't actually too bad. I, yeah, even looking up close, it was still a little bit difficult to actually see if the per pixels. So, in that regard, it's all right. But definitely avoid if you can. I certainly don't recommend it at all. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later. I'm gonna put this back together for the customer and let them know about their severed face ID, which I'm assuming they probably already knew about. Anyway, bye.